Hey guys, Julius Meniscus here. Welcome to another, um, let's say, let's say, sort of rant review sort of thing. I don't, I don't know what these types of videos are kind of called. Um, I, I guess they're sort of rants because um, basically I'm going to watch what's called Alien Covenant tomorrow, and um, people, people who uh, who I, I like to think are my friends, they 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 hate Prometheus, and uh, I love Prometheus. So um this this entire video is basically just uh, sort of explaining why I love Prometheus so much and um how you all normies just you know you goddamn just understand for once that every single film doesn't have to be action and bullshit all right so <laughs> sorry so sorry if I've sorry if I've triggered anyone there I, I didn't mean to please uh, carry on watching my videos um, but basically, the entire reason that I love um, Prometheus so much is because it asks. It's the the entire thing is a, a prequel to the the famous, the very famous and amazing uh, Alien quadrilogy. All right, I say amazing. Most most of it's good. Up to three is good. Uh, we don't talk about number four. But um, yeah, it's it's a prequel as uh, as to that. With the entire uh, consensus of it being like. Um, what are aliens? How do they? How do they get there? What is? Was the whole point? How do they exist? And all that sort of stuff. Uh, and Ridley Scott then made Prometheus in order to explain it away. Um, but uh, he did it over he, the the overall arc is how did aliens? How what 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 is the purpose of aliens? How did they come to exist? All that sort of MacGuffin and stuff. Um, over the pretense of how did humans come to be? What is the purpose of human existence and all that sort of stuff? Which is why Holloway and uh, um, whatever the, the woman's name is, <laughs> that's their surname. Yeah, the Holloway people. Uh, that's the whole point of their expedition. And you know, they're, 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 in, they're on Earth, they uncover these paintings and they're like, oh yeah, cause there's, there's, there's some creator and sort of stuff. Um, and that's the that's the entire like basis of the entire thing. That's the entire arc. And yeah, who created us is the whole point of it. Because um, what is it? Her name, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, that's her name. She um, is a religious believer. She's been a religious believer her entire life, and she's trying to find out who our creators are. And through these murals that they found on Earth, they've found who the creators are. Because there's no way that ancient civilizations would collectively know who the hell these kind of people are. Um, however, there are two schools of thought when it comes to who created us. There is the Elizabeth Saw way, the religious way, the religious faith, like who created, who is the creator of human life, who is the creator, who is God, basically, is what she's finding. Um, and then there's the, the corporate side of it, the, the Wayland Corporation. Now, I will spoil it, because it's been out for like five years now, four years, whatever. Um, old dude, Wayland, the, the, the boss in charge. Um, during the movie, you're meant to pretend he's dead, he's actually alive, he's trying to find the secret to immortality. Because he assumes that um, the god, the engineers, that's what they're called in the movie, the engineers, they, um, if they can create life, then they, can, they surely have a way to preserve it. So his whole mission is to find a way to be eternal, to, to live forever. Or to be, to be young again, to you know, get rid of those wrinkles and all that CGI that's on his face. And then there's Elizabeth Shaw's like a religious aspect, um, which was going to be explored. There were actually deleted scenes of um, of um, the engineer being like Jesus. Uh, he, uh, as we saw at the very beginning of the movie, the engineer gave his life in order to create life. We'll get onto that later, but the basic premise is he gave his life in order to create human life. That was the whole point of it. That he went to Earth, he created human life. Well, he created normal life and then evolution took its toll. Um, but there was also a bit where an engineer came onto Earth and he was crucified as Jesus and all that sort of stuff, which angered the engineers, which is why they hate us. But that's um, another plot line that got scrapped anyway because Ridley Ripley didn't want to uh, ruin anything too quickly. Um, but the, then, then we really lead on to the question: How did they create us with the black goo and all that sort of stuff? And which is everyone, everyone's sort of confused about because it's it's not explained fully. But, surprise bitches, Ridley Scott is a genius and he has explained everything because he explains everything. He's just, well, he's, he's, a, he's, he's really good <laughs> at what he does. Um, and I'll explain to you later again. I'm getting ahead of myself, ADHD, what can I say? Um, I'll, I'll, get, I'll, tell, I'll explain later why um, 
I, I hate people who say this film shit. The reason they created us, the, no, the how of how they created us is, you see, you know the black goo at the start of the movie that you see with the engineer, the engineer drinks it. That uh, organic goo is, is organic, first of all, it's a, it's a living component. And what it does is it changes the actual cellular uh, DNA of us. It's, it's cellular reconstruction is basically what it is. So what it did with the engineer, it killed the engineer. It like completely fucking ripped open his DNA. It completely fucking took out the what TTAT or whatever the fuck the DNA is nowadays. Who knows, man? Um, it completely destroyed all those, and then it realigned them all back together. So it it created life. It it literally created the first DNA human cells. Well, regular cells, whatever, whatever the first animal was. It created that. That was the very first thing it created. On Earth, and that was the whole that was the whole thing of the engineers on Earth. Uh, yeah, in reconstructs at a cellular level. Uh, so we saw with the engineer on a massive scale, like he drank the entire fucking liquid thing, and so he died. He got fucking decom decomposed, reduction dissolved. I don't know, something like that. He just got completely fucked up, and then became DNA for for us. Um, you also saw it with the worm while they were inside the cave thing there was a worm that got submerged in it and he became like a little let's say mini face hugger that's what he was um so he also changed on evolutionary spectrum spectrum yeah that's the one uh evolutionary scale uh he you know they became more advanced more evolved um the worm you know worms just a shitty little creature it now had actual attacks it was strong and all that sort of stuff it broke someone's fucking arm like jesus christ um, Firefield, you know, he, he fucking got his head dumped into it, he changed physically, he turned into that zombie creature, um, and then he also, he also, what did he do? He like, he crushed people's heads and shit, and he lifted really heavy stuff, so as we can see, the, the fucking organic matter actually changes the person physically, and uh, it turns, it changes them mentally as well, but who cares about that, because it turned into like a kind of a zombie, a host, if you will. Um, what else? Holloway, the original scientist, he had like one drop put in his drink. Nothing really changed for him. He started to change, but it was very, very slow for him. But that's but his DNA was already starting to change because he when he uh let's say did the deed with Elizabeth, he carried on his DNA. Which means his DNA is literally already changing. It's already changing so much that she gave birth to an alien. Um so the, the black goo changes your DNA. That's the that's the entire purpose of the, the black goo. All right. I don't know how how better how much better I can explain it because that's the that's the best you can explain it. Um, that's literally it. And then we get onto the question of why did they create us? What, what what's their purpose? What's their what's the purpose? That's the whole reason that Elizabeth is trying to find out. Um, Wayland Corporation. They don't really care. They're just looking for immortality. Um, but Elizabeth Shaw, she, her entire purpose is to figure out why the fuck did they create us, uh, and also Holloway, but he's, he's a person, who cares, uh, he's a dick to Michael Fassbender, so he's a cunt, he's just an arsehole, um, and the basic premise, uh, the accepted premise amongst all Promethean lovers, <laughs> um, which there are, because Prometheus is a good movie, and hopefully after listening to me you understand, um, is because they could, um, when, what is it, um, Holloway is talking to David, the android, Michael Fassbender, he goes, oh, it's so sad, I wanted to talk to them, it's so deep, but then, um, the, what's his, what's the android's name, David, yeah, David, David goes, why did you, why do you create us, uh, do you think, and then Holloway goes, because we could, then David goes, how disappointed would you be if your creators said the same thing? And that's the entire purpose. Basically, we are just an experiment in the world of the alien. They came to Earth, they sacrificed one of their people, and then their, their, their ship fucked off. They went to another planet, where I'm assuming. Either they went to a planet or they went to the home planet, either way. And life was born. And that's it. That's all we were. We were just an experiment to see if the black goo worked. And I'm assuming it, it, it obviously worked, because human life and all that shit. So that's all good. And yeah, there's 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 similarities between the android and uh, the god, which I really love. There's there's always similarities in uh, Ridley Scott's movies. There's always like a, a smaller context you can bring on. So the android human, we created androids just simply because we could, according to Holloway. And 
David is, suppo is suggesting that the only reason that engineers created us is because they could, because they were just experimenting. That's the, that's the entire purpose. There's literally no other purpose beyond that, which is, that's, that's, that's a cool premonition. That's, that's a nice exploring thing. But because it's so subtle, people ignore it and then they complain the movie shit and it annoys me. However, and this is a big however, this is an alien movie set in the alien universe. How come there's no aliens? Well, random viewer, I'm glad you asked this question because in actual fact, there's technically aliens. <laughs> so obviously you've got the engineers that are aliens, yes. You've got the, the, the fucking fetus that hollow as sure birthed. I keep confusing the names. Um, but the, the entire purpose of this thing, it's a prequel. It's meant to explain the aliens' existence, how they came to be. Um, they are still around, as we saw when they entered, you know, the, the, the tomb slash altar with the massive head and the black goo, like all that shit. Uh, they, there was a mural, they pointed towards a mural and they were like, what the fuck is this? It's a mural. What? Um, and on it was clearly a xenomorph. A uh, xenomorph queen, I believe it was. You know, the one that lays all the eggs and does the, does the nasty. Um, where's it going? So yeah, they, they clearly exist at the same time as the engineers. And also the dead body that Firefield comments on, they found like a massive, massive pile of dead bodies. And because I'm just an amateur YouTuber, I'm never going to edit this so I can actually show you like the actual scenes. So apologies, but I'm just going to, you know, hope that you remember this shit. If you don't, fuck you, watch it again and you understand. Um, yeah, the, the dead bodies and Firefield explains, whoa, exclaims, not explains. Oh, whoa, these things that it's like they were burst from the inside out. Like, they exploded from the chest, like, okay, that's clearly a chest burster, obviously. So, I mean, they they are around, and, um, what is it, my theory, yes, I had a theory, uh, yes, I have a theory that the black goo, uh, actually turns everything into aliens. Because, um, you saw with the worm, when the worm changed, it turns into a mini facehugger, as I said before. But that's when it's been drenched with goo. So, my theory is that aliens came about because... Of the black goo. After all, the black goo is what made um, fucking Elizabeth have the fetus baby that turned into the very first human face hugger, which then spawned the Deacon, which I don't think exists in the universe anymore, or is just is just roaming around on another planet. They don't care about anymore. I haven't seen Alien Covenant, so I don't know how m much further the plot goes. But as of now, the Deacon remains just nothing. He's just he's just another alien. He's the very first engineer alien and that's the thing um yeah if if uh the biological goo always creates aliens that means i've tested it before which is how aliens exist and why there's no life on the planet anymore apart from the dead fucking uh engineers that have their chest burst open and also the fact that uh on the map sometimes uh idris elba exclaimed that he saw some movement uh like a click west and they didn't go that way um, and also the fact that there's no life on the planet at all, which is which happened on Paradise as well. We saw on the Alien Covenant trailers that like there's no life at all apart from the aliens. Woo! Tense. Um, and also, yeah, the worm created the face hugger. The engineer created the Deacon. Uh, is is my favorite. And then humans, humans, whenever they have the chest burst, they create the the classic xenomorph that we know. When it ingests into a dog, it creates the dog fucking alien, etc, etc. So, the black goo always creates it, and then each, like, um, in every single species, it creates a different type of alien, I'm assuming, is my theory. However, this theory doesn't work because the black goo was ingested by the engineer, and we were born out of it, we're not aliens, so theory's a bit, bit not solid. That's my theory anyway, I don't care, I'm sticking to it. Um, and also there's the theory it's been used as, it's been used as a biological weapon. I'm not sure if it has actually been used as a biological weapon, but the fact that the engineers are scared of it and shit like that. <sighs> Fuck, it's, it's really hard to talk. How long has it been? 15 minutes and I've just been talking non-stop. Um, it's been used as a biological weapon. There was like an engineer civil war. Again, I'm not sure if this actually plays out in Alien Covenant because we see a city of en dead engineers. So that might actually be a thing, not too sure. <clears throat> and then we get to the final, like, last bit of the movie, the bit that 
I found really confusing the first time I watched it. So what happens? There's there's the baby. Um, the baby scene that was fucking weird. That's like the most terrifying scene I've ever watched in like the past ten years of movies I've watched. That was just strange. Um, and I mean, yeah, no, that's just the weirdest. Fucking doing an abortion right in front of me. It wasn't even an abortion. It was a C-section. God damn. Um, <laughs> we're done there. That's that's as much as you need to go in. Don't just watch that bit and be done. Uh, and then the alien turns into that. That that turns into the very first high face hugger. The very first human face hugger. Is what the whole point of it was meant to be. Was it called a trilobite? Yeah, trilobite. And then it, it and then it impregnated the face. Um, engineers. It impregnated the engineer and thus made the deacon. Which is a new species of alien that we've never seen before. Um, another example of the exact same thing happening is a face hugger attached itself to the predator and made the pred alien. I mean, that's a retarded concept. Alien versus Predator Two, I believe it was. Yeah, that was horrible. Or Predator Two, I don't remember. It was bad. But um, yeah, the the face hugger, the the alien, the type of alien is contingent upon the host, is what we can assume. Um, I don't know where I was going with that, but that's 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 what I was doing. The final the final act. Oh yeah, um, the final act. The people will hate it so much is because it just ends without leaving any questions. Like people will remember just the deacon scene. Like the the deacon wakes up and goes, Skill! and then it cuts to black. That's not how the deacon actually sounds. But I mean, I, I'm loosely interpreting. Um, <laughs> but no one remembers the fact that um, after David got his block knocked off by the engineer. Shaw picked up the head, and they fucked off to find more answers. The whole point of this isn't meant to be a trilogy prequel. You don't give answers in the very first one. You give an idea of what the universe is about, how it came to be, and you give, like, something, but with an overreaching arc. The overreaching arc is how the aliens were created. We got some idea. We got some idea the the black goo does something. Aliens are involved in this black goo. There are facehuggers involved in this black goo. We have yet to see aliens, and we're going to see aliens in Alien Covenant. So that's the second step. And then the third step is how it leads on to Alien, the very first movie in the franchise. So basically, the same as Star Wars, the prequels. Episode 1, you know, we saw um, we saw the start of Anakin. We saw him as a little kid. Episode 2, we saw him as an adult-ish, teenager, fucking whiny little bitch. <laughs> I like the prequels, they're right. And then episode 3, we saw his final climax... With, you know, the entire thing about engineers. Uh, the, the Sith. The, the the entire overarching of the Sith coming about. Revenge of the Sith. You know, they're coming back, making a comeback, killing all the Jedi, all that shit. That was the entire, like, overreaching arc. The overreaching arc of Prometheus and the rest of the trilogy, whatever it's going to be called, is to fucking find out how aliens involved in the alien franchise. And how they were created. Who created them, why they created them, etc, etc. However, humans are very closely involved with this, somehow. We're about to find out. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the fact that it's very subtle. All these all these things you have to, yes, true, you have to interpret quite a bit. But if you watch the movie, I mean, I watched it just now. And I, I, I've understood all these things from it. Um... I watched like a uh, one YouTube video it was like five minutes long. It explained like everything. It's like a IGN thing, Prometheus in five minutes. Like that's it, and explained everything. I understood most of the ba- or most like the basic concepts, and then after watching it today, like half an hour ago, I've understood all of it. I can I can safely make my, I have even made my own theory about it. I can safely say that I understand what Ridley Scott is going for and what he's trying to do, and for that I commend him because it's quite fucking impressive the fact that he's dealing with the issues of god the issues that we are meaningless in existence we're literally just an experiment the uh thing that there's aliens there's extraterrestrial life uh the fact that what other fact oh the fact that uh we have angered our god quote unquote engineer uh and they want to kill us because we have uh we have failed as an experiment we are a failed experiment because they they try to kill us is all that is, but that's not explained fully. So another theory, let's say. 
it's, it's, it deals with a lot of massive fucking issues, but it deals with them very subtly, very tiny details, like the Android talk, you, from that you can glean a lot of information from. Uh, it deals with human nature as well, the fact that um, the captain is a little cold-hearted stone bitch, she's literally a robot, whereas the robot has more human emotion than her. The search for a mortal life, oh my god, it's just so good. And then people dare to call it shit, but I digress. Um, hopefully with this video, I think I've, co I've covered all my points, I think I had like a shitty little piece of paper with like three points on it. Uh, I hope I've covered everything in enough detail to maybe change your mind about Prometheus and make, maybe, uh, let, make you watch it again. So I, I hope I at least tried, I, I helped in some way. If you got up to this point in the, in the thing, that means you're probably involved because people get bored in the first six seconds. But, um... Yeah, I, I hope I, I hope I I did my best is what I'm going to say. Thank you all very much for watching and ta-ra. Thank you.